What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video, we are going to talk more about why Clarium and Rachel Legends was sold by Aristocrat Leisure Limited. So Aristocrat, if you guys didn't know, is actually the parent company. It's actually quite a large company. Uh, and Clarium is actually only part of a segment of their business. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And we are going to deep dive into their annual earnings report. They just released it. Uh, and we will find out exactly how well Plarium and Raid was actually doing and why they were sold by Aristocrat. First things first. So Aristocrat Leisure Limited, like I said, is the parent company. They are a publicly traded company. Full disclosure, I don't own any of this. But they are doing pretty good in terms of the stock market. This is the year to date. So 2024, they are doing pretty good. So just for your uh, information here. So let's dive right into this earnings report here. So Aristocrat Leisure Limited is a global entertainment and gaming content creation company powered by technology listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Uh, Aristocrat has three operating segments spanning uh, regular, regulated land-based gambling. So that is called Aristocrat Gaming. So that's one segment. Mobile Gaming published that's called pixel united that's another segment and then they have their third segment called real money gaming which is called aristocrat interactive so these three segments make up the company aristocrat leisure okay guys we're going to break down each one of those segments and see how they work and what they're all about so here are the figures for their year to year over year so this is their 2024 fiscal year end ending i believe end of september so you can kind of see here every year they've been trending upwards. They've been making more revenue, more earnings, share prices have been going up, et cetera, et cetera. So they're doing things right as a company. As a company, they're doing things right. They currently employ, you know, 8,500 people across the globe. They have lots of different um, diverse avenues, uh, streams, of, streams of revenue coming in. So yeah, they're a pretty good uh, run company right now. So the first real comment here about Plarium and Rachel Legends. They said a strategic review of the group's casual mid-core gaming assets were announced in May. So I covered this back in May. Basically, uh, took some of the CEO's comments and that said that he was thinking about selling Plarium. Um, and of course, here it is. They actually did it, do it, and I did think that they were going to do it. And then they said yesterday, November 12th, the group announced the sale of Plarium Global Limited for $620 million with $200 million consideration to Modern Times Group, we'll call that MTG. It's a Swedish company. Uh, they run uh, a bunch of media stuff, television. Uh, they also have some gaming um, companies and studios in their portfolio as well. Very old, uh, old company, about 40 years old almost. And they're planning to use the proceeds from a transaction to be deployed into Aristocrats longer term growth strategy. Uh, in line with capital allocation, okay? The transaction is expected to enhance Aristocrat's revenue growth rate and margins going forward. These are important things to, to think about here, right? So the strategical review of Big Fish games, excluding the casino assets, remain ongoing. Aristocrat will lean into its strengths in regulated gaming and slot content and drive growth and scale benefits around common core product and technologies. All right, so what is that all about? What is that all about? How did they determine what to do what, and how to digest all of that? So quick look here at the total revenues we see here in the black color. 55% of their total revenue comes from their gaming segment, which is their slot machines, physical machines, sales of physical machines, the servicing of machines. 55% of the total revenue comes from that segment. 40% comes from their Pixel United, which is their mobile free-to-play gaming monetization um, segment of their business. And 5% come from interactive gaming, which is their uh, lottery uh, gaming, uh, basically gambling, uh, online gambling portion of their business. You see here 66% of their profit actually come from their slot machine and physical machines business, while only 31% of their profit come from Pixel United, which include Pixelarium and Rachel Legends. 3% of profit come from their uh lottery and gambling uh, segments so we can kind of see here that obviously slot machines big part of their business quick look here at this slide showing the uh investment in terms of what they're doing um in terms of organic growth they're saying that they you can kind of see here from their uh this dark purple segment 33 percent last year reduced to 30 percent. basically this is 
their reduction in user acquisition. So they're spending less money getting uh, new users and using that money and putting that money into this uh, thing called CapEx, which is capital expenditure. So they're spending more in terms of investing into the business. So buying businesses, for example, right? So they're putting more money there and removing uh, you know, their spending budget from getting users. Again, we can kind of see the shift, the shift of uh, where Aristocrat is going towards. All right, so let's quickly jump into each segment and what they are all about. So this one is the Aristocrat Gaming. So like I said, this is the slot machine. So this is the leading designer, manufacturer, and distributor of regulated land-based slot machine, slot games across the globe. From award-winning games and hardware to unique game mechanics and leading performance, Crat Gaming delivers end-to-end -end solutions to customers in more than 300 jurisdictions across the globe. They strive to be industry leaders in responsible gameplay, blah, 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 right? So you can kind of see here, what do we got? 5% increase in revenue over the previous year, 9% increase in profit, very profitable and growing revenue, growing profits. This segment, big part of their business doing extremely, extremely well. They did a quick comparison here for the North America um, sales versus the rest of the world. So they're saying North America has declined about 5%, but most of their actual gains have been from across the world. So they're saying here in Asia, revenue and profit grew 60 percentage points, which is massive. That is massive. So they definitely are, you know, growing or expanding in the right direction. They're saying profits versus the rest of the world has exceeded expectations. And for interest sake, this is how much a machine costs. I believe average cost per unit, $24,000 US dollars or what is that? Yeah. Sales per unit. Yeah. 24 Australian dollars actually per unit. That's actually pretty cool. I didn't know that just for interest sake and massive sales growth here. 45% of uh, increase in sales uh, in Asia. So really, really strong performance outside of North America. So, you know, you kind of see where they're, where they're heading, right? So that's one segment of their business. That's probably their biggest uh, revenue driver, profit driver right now. So now we're going to jump into the Pixel United segment of Aristocrats business. This includes a bunch of the, the, the mobile games right now. So we're seeing a, you know, basically flat uh, revenue, 1% drop, 12% profit. That's pretty good. That's really good gains in terms of profit margin. So they're doing something right here, right? So they're not, you know, generating more and more revenue. Um, but it makes sense here. So they're saying Pixel United is a risk crowd's free to play mobile first games business. Pixel United comprises three operating businesses, Product Madness, Plarium, and Big Fish Games. So Plarium is there, and then Plarium has a bunch of games under that studio. Uh, the businesses span multiple key genres and have a strong focus in responsible gameplay. Uh, they you leverage Aristocrats recognizable game brands together with in-house development, marketing capabilities, and best-in-class live ops to entertain millions across the globe each day. All right. So, I mean, we can't really deny that Playroom and Raid has made a pretty, you know, pretty entertaining, engaging game that basically hooks you forever. There's tons to do in the game. Uh, there's always things happening in the game. Um, so we got to give them credit for developing a pretty good game in that front. So they're saying that overall bookings have been mostly flat. Margins have increased, which is great. Strong focus on utilizing user acquisition spend and operational efficiency. So basically, they cut a lot of the spending towards getting, getting new players. Uh, they've had better operational efficiency. So they have lower overhead costs, which contributes to the higher profit margin. Makes sense. So like I said, there's three segments to Pixel United. One is social casinos. So this is... Yeah, there's like casino games, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know this part. I don't know any of the game, game parts in this segment, but apparently they have some social casino type games, uh, mobile games. And then they have the RPG segment, which is mostly like, you know, Raid. Raid makes up the biggest chunk of it, right? Total bookings, 552 million, decreased 2% from the previous year since the legacy titles are maturing. Makes sense, right? Le uh, Raid Shadow Legends is over five years old. Despite the slight decline, the result benefited from both user acquisition, optimization, and popular new product features within RAID. What popular new product features were introduced, I want to say? Mythical champions? Mythical champions from September to September. Mythical champions. Um, I guess the Asgard stuff was pretty strong. Uh, you know, driving up, you know, spend for, for energy and stuff. That must have been pretty good. Maybe, you know, maybe Loki as a free champion was good. Armands, that event was probably pretty good as well. Uh, what else did they have? Live Arena. 
they have the cursed city i'm just thinking about the last year or so yeah definitely mythical champions for sure so the game leveraged successful ip partnerships and creative content to deliver impressive year-over-year -year growth and surpass 2 billion in lifetime bookings 2 billion lifetime bookings lifetime spend from players into raid shadow legends ip partnerships obviously they did pretty well with the monster hunter stuff probably i believe xena is in there as well maybe it's because of ninja coming back i don't know but all this we we know we know plarium and raid does a good job with this right keeping players engaged they do a good job with this um so yeah so they've been doing good they haven't suffered too much of a decline if anything a flat you know maintaining of the revenue is actually a good sign for the game considering how old it is it's still a leader in the genre so overall doing pretty good there is a casual section here with a small game called merge garden and ever merge we can kind of see the breakdown here from 2022 23 and 24 showing small decreases in both the merge garden uh part and the raid shadow legends part so you see raid 630 562 552 it's not fully raid because it's this whole section here so it probably involves like vikings and those other smaller games but raid's going to be the massive portion of the revenue that goes into this dark purple slot uh, and then you can see kind of see dark, uh, revenue decreasing with this casual bookings merge garden ever merge section as well the only segment that is growing so this is probably the key thing you guys guys gotta think about here the key thing is the only thing that's growing from this mobile games segment of the business for aristocrat is the social casino games the social casino games are growing year over year and it's becoming a larger chunk of the total profits that Aristocrat sees from Pixel United. So this is very important, right? It's not because Raid is doing bad. Raid is still doing good. Raid is still doing awesome, right? But it's just other areas that are doing better. And where, where you know, big businesses need to continue, you know, showing shareholder value is they have to grow the business, right? So they have to look for opportunities to grow the business. Here's another slide that I'm going to show you guys. So daily active users and average bookings per user. So you can kind of see year over year, the average users in this entire Pixel United segment is going down. However, spending is going up. So they're saying that due to mixed market conditions with no new game titles, makes sense, right? You're not going to get too many new players playing old games. So they continue to focus on user retention, okay? So they're saying that's demonstrating uh, stronger player engagement has been resulting in more money spent per user. Um, yeah, like I said, no, there's no doubt that Plarium and Raid do a great job of engaging, keeping you in the game, keeping you, you know, increasing the chances of you to spend money if you're in the game, right? So they do a great job with that. And of course, keeping you busy with all sorts of stuff to do. So with all of this in mind, take a look at Aristocrat Interactive. And this is the biggest reason why they probably sold Raid and Plarium. So Aristocrat Interactive shows an 85% boost in revenue, 239% boost in profit, and massive gains in margin. You can kind of see here, they are on a massive trajectory going upwards in terms of growth. This is the part of the business where it's, you know, mainly straight up like online gambling, right? <laughs> Sports betting, eye lottery, eye gaming, straight up gambling stuff, right? Um, and they're, they're doing... You know, tons of money. They're you're acquiring new businesses, Anaxi, Neo Game businesses. Um, they're spending a lot of capital, you know, investment into this part of their business, into this segment. So I've been looking at these reports for maybe two years, and this was basically been their strategy since I first started reading up on these um, reports, and they're executing on it now. So it's very interesting to see um, all of this come come through for them because. This is a very small part of their overall revenue and profit, but they see this as having massive potential for growth. And what they are doing is basically taking a part of their business that is basically matured, still valuable, still profitable uh, in terms of being sold, and then allocating those funds from selling it into a higher potential part of their business. And this is basically why Plarium was sold. It's not because Plarium is doing bad. They're actually doing really good. It's not because Raid is doing bad. They're actually doing really good. It's because this business saw an opportunity here within their business that they're trying to develop 
and they're allocating funds into this segment of business. If, if I showed you this and this, and I said this was increasing 10 times faster and making 10 times more money or percentage wise uh, than what you have that is probably flatlining or declining, you would probably say, hey, tell me more about this part of the business, right? So to me, it absolutely makes sense that this is the main reason why Plarium and Raid Shadow Legends was sold. Um, to me, I don't think it's a bad thing that Raid was sold. I think for the player base, it's actually a good thing. I think um, the overall sentiment right now is very lukewarm. I think Plarium or Aristocrat probably put the squeeze, maybe like a pump and dump type of style on Plarium and Raid. They probably you know, were super hyper aggressive in the past year or so, trying to pump up the numbers, pump up the revenue um, from Raid. Um, just to make it look more attractive to be sold. And, you know, that's kind of like what I thought about six months ago. I was like, okay, so they're thinking about selling it. Makes total sense. Oh, it looks like we have summoning events every two days. What do you think, guys? Oh, they're making tons of money. Like, you know, classic, right? Kind of a pump and dump. They're inflating the revenue take from, you know, raid to make it look extremely, extremely valuable. It is still valuable, right? And of course, MTG buying it, spending $620 million plus to buy it um, is actually not a massively bad deal for them because Plarium paid $500 million, uh, sorry, Aristocrat paid $500 million for Plarium back in 2017. So after eight years, only selling it for six twenty, dollars factoring in inflation and all that stuff, it's not really, you know, it's not really a, a huge huge score for them to be honest so they let the i think they let it off pretty you know reasonably to mtg and mtg obviously sees a lot of value in uh, plarium and raid because they're going to try to integrate uh, some of their monetization strategies like obviously their uh, live ops they really really like i think live ops means like their um live events player engagement type stuff um and obviously that is one of raid's big strengths right so obviously some marketing stuff goes into there as well um, so MTG obviously sees a lot of value from Plarium there, as well as having Raid, you know, generate money for them and all that stuff. But I think overall for the player base, it's a, probably a good thing. I think for Plarium employees, they probably have to worry a little bit because with like these acquisitions and mergers, you're probably, you know, going to have some kind of restructuring. So hopefully, um, you know, that they don't shake things up too much. But I think for the player base, it's probably going to be okay. In terms of like over monetization, I don't think we're going to be like seeing anything else that we have never seen before from Aristocrat. Um, and, you know, if they deliver a good product, then people will spend money. That's about it. Right. And if, for example, MTG is not so familiar with like monetization and like marketing, um, you know, strategies that maybe Plarium is more aware of after having experience with Aristocrat, maybe MTG will give Plarium a little bit more autonomy with what they're doing uh, in terms of managing and developing the game who knows right honestly i think it cannot be a, a super bad thing i think the investment from mtg also makes raid a strong uh candidate to have many many more years in the future uh, i think such a big investment into this game obviously uh, mtg is going to try to get their value back and I, I just think it's just going to prolong the life of Raid, to be honest. But it seems that Plarium's time with Aristocrat is over. And from a business standpoint, it totally makes sense. They see a better business opportunity within their own business. And they wanted to allocate funds to it from an asset that they view has probably max, maxed out for them and cannot grow anymore. And they've shown that they're not going to put any more investment into this segment of their business. So along with their strategy that they want to align closer to what they're good at, which is slots, casino, regulated gaming. You know, it makes total sense that they would cut Plarium loose. Um, but yeah. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think about all this. It's very interesting stuff. Hopefully you guys were, uh, you know, entertained and informed. Um, I like reading this stuff. It's, it's cool to dive into some of the, the deeper stuff into the, this business. Um, and, you know, a lot of their decision making is based on business, right? Unfortunately, as the players, we suffer sometimes um, just because of, you know, some of their bad practices. And, you know, we can call it as it is, right? They, they got some bad, shady practices sometimes, right? So we suffer from that sometimes. But at the end of the day, they make a pretty good game, right? It engages us. It 
you know allows us to spend hours and hours on this game it's incredibly addictive to a negative to be honest um so yeah let's see what happens uh, after it changes owners so anyways guys let me know in the comments below what you guys think about everything um thank you guys so much for watching as always i'll see you guys in the next video